ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل لنا ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله ارسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي ساعه من يطيع الله ورسوله فقد رشد ومن يعص ما فقد هوى قد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم قال الله سبحانه وتعالى بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد كان لكم في رسول الله اسوة حسنة لمن كان يرجو الله واليوم الاخر ذكر الله كثيرا Who are you? It's a very important question at your age. Who are you? Can't live life without knowing who you are. Although many do. Many of you are in the delving into the field of psychology. You have what's called a your cognitive framework right your cognitive framework is basically it is the framework of influences upon you during the duration of your life it's your parents and it depends on what that situation is sometimes it's a single family home like there's variations when you say parents It's your education, it's your friends, it's the entertainment industry, it's the social political influence. Look at that, look at that. All of these things are influencing you. The issue is not that there are influences because there are many and there are a variety of types. There's a spectrum of influences. both good and bad and everything in between but before you can even like delve into like you know, what is good and what is bad and actually enter into that discussion the first thing is you have to be conscious of the fact that these influences are there in your life and they are potentially having an impact on how you see yourself and how you see the world around you how you see yourself within that world around you in arabic and in this deen at islam this is what is known as a portion of but it is part of an aspect of what you and i know as taqwa right conscious but what does that mean because The question for a Muslim like who are you? If any of you sitting here right now are here and you are your your identity is not 100% basically solidified. At least the foundations. You are in danger. You are in danger. If you are not conscious of the influences upon you spiritually emotionally psychologically intellectually then you are in danger because those influences will decide your identity for you you will be an unconscious participant in the world around you you're just a cog a megaphone repeating what you're hearing behind you no real thought no real perspective like a muslim because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says who is your identity who no i didn't say what who is your identity based upon if other than rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam laqad kana لقد كان لكم في رسول الله you already have لقد كان لكم you already have this 
That's what is the, in it, the, 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 the irony. That is what it is saying. You already have this. In whom? In Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clarifies, just in case you have any doubt whatsoever, because Allah ta'ala says, He is what uswatun hasana. The most excellent of examples. He is our role model. He is the one that you look up to. He is the one that you emulate. He is the one that is the standard that you and I, we hold our character, our personalities, our actions, our words, our beliefs even, up to him. To determine whether we are right, wrong, or where we are at on that spectrum of right and wrong. But this only works for a particular group of people. So Allah specifies, clarifies who these people are. The ones, and here the word is rajat, hope. They have placed their hope not in their own ability, not in technology, not in creation or any aspect of creation, period. They have placed their hope entirely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what's their perspective? That their hope extends where? This is their perspective. Yom al The perception and perspective of a Muslim must transcend the life of this world. It is the only way that you will have clarity and be able to live this life and deal with the challenges of this life, which are inevitable, the vicissitudes of life. It is the only way that you will be able to face these challenges and survive, not just survive, but to thrive and come out on top. In this world, as well as in the next. But there is another aspect. That this person stays in the dhikr of Allah. Meaning what? Conscious. Conscious to what? You know, mashallah, these days, everybody's woke. Never seen so many woke sleeping people before in my life. Everybody's woke, right? So I'm woke. Okay. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says more or less the meaning that the person who remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is like the living person. You are alive. And the one who does not remember Allah is like the dead, the deceased. Those of you who understand the reference, they are the walking dead. They are around you. They live around you. You interact with them. Only if these ones drive cars. And they work. And they consume. Still the walking dead. Because it is the purpose of the existence of the human being. Is what? What is your purpose? Why do you exist? No, this is not a philosophy class. Because we have no need. Right? Allah Ta'ala says He created what? I have not created jinn kind and mankind except for my ibadah. Now, let me ask you a question. Don't answer. Except internally. What is the meaning of the word ibadah? And if you say worship, Internally. What is the meaning of the word worship? If you don't know, what are you doing? It's the purpose of your life. It's been contained in a single word. Now that word has to be unpackaged, granted. But it's there in a single word. The purpose why human beings exist. Ibadatullah. You're all 
Muslims. We are blessed to have this kalima in our hearts. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. But Allah Ta'ala in our Quran, Kalamullah, when Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, this is why I created you, what right do we have to change that? To make our purpose anything other than what Allah has stated in the Quran? And if we do so, then what is that? If we do so, then what is that? Here's a bigger question. If you don't know what ibadah means, and if you say it's worship, then you don't know what worship means. Then what are we doing? Are you fulfilling your purpose? Or not? You can't say. You can't say. Because you don't even know what the criterion is. Yani, it's like, a, 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 imagine like you take a philosophy class and the, the big thing, that like, I don't even know what philosophy is. You signed up for the class. I have complete clues. I just like checked the box. I like marked it, signed up for it. I have no idea. I'll find out on the first day. SubhanAllah. So your identity, because we deal with this on a regular basis, identity crises, inferiority complex, etc., and the indications and the symptoms are clearly there. For anybody who's in denial, if you look in the Muslim community, the indications and the symptoms are clearly there. Actually, it's not just like it's profoundly there. Profoundly there. Which means what? What's already happening will continue to take place until... Maybe it's your children or your children's children that are not Muslim. Because you can only give them what you have. You can only teach them what you know. You can only share the experiences that you have experienced. You cannot give them or do anything more than that. So think, not about what you want to do. That's fine. Whatever it is, as long as it's halal. And not only that, but you be the best at it. You be the best at it. I don't care what field you go into. As long as it's halal, you be the best. Represent Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in that environment. You be the best at what you do. As far as these mundane aspects. Go do your job. But be the best at it. But remember, it's just a job. It is not your identity. Because if it is, then that is shallow. That is superficial. And that is something which is relegated strictly and solely just to the life of this world. You are here to learn, like for the most of you, what to do. A career. MashaAllah. And around that, you'll like fill in the, the gaps and the blanks with a little bit of this and a little bit of that, mashallah, as your as your interests prevail, mashallah. But it doesn't and it will not answer the question: who are you? Because having, I'll end with this, entering into the world society as an adult, an independent adult, with a, for a lack of a better way of putting it, a Sunday school level of education in Islam, is wholly inadequate. I want to make sure that I'm very clear about that. A Sunday school level of education, and I know a lot of Muslims that they have not even had that, is insufficient. You will not, especially in this environment, especially in this atmosphere, as we are witnessing erosion, social, political, economic, etc., erosion actually taking place around us. 
you're not going to be able to survive in this environment. This is real. This is bigger than a career. This is about your eternity. This is about your akhira. This is about forever. Some of you will live to see 30. Some will not. Some will live to see 40 or 50 or even 60 or 70. Some will not. It comes in a hadith that the average age of the Ummati of Muhammad is 60 to 70 years. Now, assuming that most of you are in your early 20s, or close to it, maybe 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, whatever the case may be, let's call it 20 years. So if we keep like 60, just for simple mathematics, one third of your life is done. It's finished. One third, 33% is finished. What have you done with it? Who are you one third of the way through? Who are you in the sight of Allah one third of the way through? And who do you want to be at two thirds if you make it? But a better question, a more realistic question, who do you want to be right now? Because you can decide right now. You can learn how to fulfill, like how to, how to be that person. That's something different. But you can make the decision right now. You can make the firm and determined decision. I want to be like the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I want to properly represent Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is who I am. Here, as well as on the Day of Judgment, and hopefully by Allah's rahmah and by the fadl of Allah in Jannah. And to let you know something, everything that you're basically learning right now is useless in Jannah. It's useless. I don't care what you are. You're an engineer? No need. Sorry. You're a doctor? Ah, we don't need you here. There's no sickness. There's no death. There's no pain. You're an architect? So am I. Watch this. Palace. Watch me fly. Don't forget, you don't die. You want to swim underwater without breathing? Well, by all means. You want to fly in the sky? Well, by all means. You want to change a palace? By all means. Are you hungry? Think it. It is the place of desire. Allah is saying, I want you to desire. Desire as much as you want. And then, try to do better than that. Because this is for you. Because you made, you paid. You paid the cost. You paid the price. You were willing what was, to do what needed to be done. When it needed to be done. How it needed to be done. You chose your identity as opposed to having it decided for you. And you chose correctly. Walking in the footsteps of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And now this is not just a reward. This is your home. Forever. And ever. And ever, 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 ever. And there will be Jumu'ah. Yes. We will gather. As a community, we will meet the Amirah Salam. You can talk to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. My child, one of my kids, when I was studying, my oldest, at that time she was like eight or nine. She asked a question. My kids called me Abuji. I said, Abuji, did Adam Ali Salam have a belly button? He didn't have a mother, right? So I'm studying. I shall go ask the shuk. So I'm in class. Sheikh, my daughter asked me a question. Oh, mashallah, mashallah. What's the question? Did Adam have a belly button? He goes. <laughs> <laughs> 
beautiful person, mashallah, may Allah bless him. He says, get to Jannah and ask him to find out. I thought that was the most amazing answer. Right? And it's through ways like this that these teachers broaden, somebody like me, broaden my perception and perspective beyond this world. Because that's how they thought. And that's how you and I need to think today. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for all of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of our shortcomings. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us and give us the strength and the courage to grow and to mature into the footsteps of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala solidify our identity as Muslims according to the definition which exists in Islam, according to the definition which exists with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, according to the definition which success is attached to. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. Astaghfirullah alameen wa lakum ajma'in. Fastaghfiru inna huwa al-ghafuru rahim. Inna alhamdulillahi nah. Nahmadu wa nasta'inu 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 wa أعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله قال الله سبحانه وتعالى إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد عبدك وحبيبك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وأزواجه وذرياته وصحبه أجمعين اللهم اغفر لنا وللمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات يا مثبت القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك يا مصرف القلوب صرف قلوبنا على طاعتك اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا يا كريم اللهم إنا نسألك العفو والعافية والمعافات ونسألك من فضلك يا ذا الفضل العظيم عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمركم بالعدل والإحسان وإنتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء ومنكر البغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون أقيم الصلاة